everybody welcome back to the channel I just finished up my work and you know what this is my second video back to back all right so it's like 4 a.m. but I pumped it out so today we're gonna go over programming relearning pin code retrieval and key coding we're gonna string all these processes together and you're gonna see how it's done all right so let's jump into it guys I call this one Chrysler Town & Country PCM Case Study Programming, Relearning, and PIN Codes, all right? Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Curtis Harden. I'm an Autel Diagnostic Consultant. If you would like to purchase your tool, you want me to render the services that you see here, um, you, know, you know where to go, all right? So to start this case study, we are working with the Maxi Sisk Elite and it's J2534 on a 2011 Chrysler Town and Country. And all we're gonna do is program the PCM, all right? Now this particular client, um, he knows how to do programming, but I, I tell you guys, I, the law of attraction on some people, it's like some people just attract the weirdest things. So he just wants me to tag along just to, you know, help him through those little uh, obstacles, you know? And uh, yeah, pretty easy procedure. Um, so as you guys know, the PCM is the brain of the vehicle and after you program it all right there's several things that we need to do to configure it all right this is what i was trying to teach people there's a difference between programming and coding we we, we like to misuse this these terms a lot um so the first relearning procedure is to learn the electronic throttle control the etc and there's another procedure called a quick learn all right um, here are the removal instructions. It's very simple. Okay, you can disconnect and isolate the negative battery cable, uh, disconnect the powertrain control module, and then uh, on the third step, remove the bolt one and bolt two, as you see on the diagram, and then you're gonna slip that new PCM right in and just follow the procedure in reverse. Okay, so let's jump to the program. All right, so since it's a brand new PCM module, we gotta pop in the VIN manually, okay? And after we put in the VIN, it's gonna take us to this, the, the menu and we're gonna click Flash ECU, press OK. And then while this is programming, you guys, it's gonna ask us to do some very simple instructions where we need to turn off the ignition and turn it back on. Please turn the ignition key off, all right? And then it's gonna tell us to turn it back on and then this process is successful, all right? Now, the second thing we need to do is relearn it. So if you click here where it says routine, okay? Um, it's gonna give us some follow-up routines to do, and you just work your way down. So I checked the VIN to see if that was okay. The VIN's valid, all right? And then the next thing I need to do is learn the uh, uh, ETC. And for some reason, you guys, I don't know why, nothing was working i would click run click continue and nothing would happen no response all right did it again no response i'm like you know what let's just get the maxi sys all right let's just get the maxi sys i know it could do it and that's exactly what we did all right so to get to this function you're gonna click powertrain engine control and then you look for the learn electronic throttle control option and then we just follow the prompts, all right? So this is gonna be some manual instructions where you need to press the accelerator to the floor and um, just follow the instructions, you guys. Hold the accelerator firmly for five seconds, four, three, two, one, rah. All right, and then it's gonna tell us to put our foot off and it's gonna do this, uh, another countdown. All right, don't touch the accelerator on this procedure. All right, and then after that is done, um, we're gonna click OK. It's gonna give us a confirmation. All right. Learned pass. Awesome. Now, client forgot to do this. All right. You need to do the quick relearn. Anytime you you replace a power control module, a solenoid replacement, a clutch plate, a valve body, a transaxle assembly, you need to do this relearn. All right. What he did, he noticed the car wasn't starting. He ran uh, an auto scan and he saw that um, there was an error code on the immobilizer system. All right. So this is a theme, guys. Anytime you replace engine control modules, that's 
uh, correlate it with the immobilizer system. So this is why it's good to have um, uh, a special tool, which I'm gonna show you just now, all right? So to get to this, we're gonna go to hot functions and we're gonna look for the immobilizer uh, and keys options, all right? And then we're gonna click PCM replace, WCMT PMS on the top right, okay? And then use this function only when the PCM has been replaced, all right? And we're gonna press okay. And then it's looking for the pin and it's gonna ask us for the pin. Now, what a lot of people don't know, or maybe you, you may know this, but on our Maxisys tools like the, uh, the Pro, the Elite, you know, the 906BT, all of them, you can't access pin codes for Chrysler's with these devices, all right? So what do you do, all right? Well, you got some options, all right? Don't know if they're gonna work. You can call the dealer, all right? You know, maybe you, you meet a guy that had a good day that day. You know, the, um, you give them the VIN number, they'll give you the pin. That doesn't happen most of the time, they're gonna ask, uh, for you to get a locksmith license, all right? So to, to get that, you can go to nastf.org and uh, it's, it's not an easy process, you guys. There's a, there's a lot of shite you gotta do. You gotta have a uh, driver's license, business license, um, proof of employment, and check this out. You need liability insurance um, with a $1 million policy, okay? Like, it's, it's ridiculous. All right, so we don't got time for that, all right? And luckily, by working with my client and seeing this common procedure where we need to get PIN codes, I told him to invest in the IM508, okay? Now, for those of you who don't know, there's the IM608, which is like the godfather of the bigger brother of this tool. The 508 is a toned down version. It doesn't have the uh, strong um, diagnostic capability. The diagnostic side is like stage one, but the key coding side is like level four out of five. All right, so you can do everything in terms of key coding that the 608 could do, except for like some of the BMW and Mercedes because you need an external accessory called the XP400. What, if you purchase that, you got the same key coding capability of the, of the 608, all right? And uh, it's a fantastic addition for people who don't want to go for the, whole, the, the you know, the IM608. Uh, so for mine for $1,800, me and my army of engineers come included, so that's what you're paying for, all right? Now, let's screw that, let's jump back into this case study. Now, to get the pin code, it's a fairly, fairly simple process. Um, we're gonna select Chrysler, all right? And then we're gonna select Smart Mode which you can see right there. And then we're gonna follow the prompts and press okay, all right? And then we're gonna click smart key on the upper left because it was a smart key. And then magically, it's gonna do its thing, switch the ignition off and then on and make sure the engine is off. Bada boom, bada bing, we got our pin code, okay? Now, once we got our pin code, we can go back to the elite, all right? And you're, I'm sure you're excited, you know, my client was excited, he's oh, Kurt, my first time using it, da, 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 da. So he goes in there, he puts in the pin code, and we get a prompt that says, test aborted, conditions not correct, all right? This means something's wrong, and the what we need to do is we need to clear any faults that are in the engine control module, the PCM module, all right? That thing needs to be clear as day. Otherwise, we can't uh, do the key relearning process, all right? So that's what we did. Now, we can go back into that module and do the uh, relearning process. So we're gonna go into the WCM TPMS wireless control module, okay? I uh, hope I didn't skip it. Let's see, yeah, we're gonna go back here. You can see it right there. Come on, hurry up. There we go, WCM. We're gonna click that. All right, and then from there, we're gonna go to special function. We can see right there at the bottom. 
all right? And then from there, we're gonna look for PCM replaced on the top right, all right? And all we do from here is uh, follow the prompts, all right? Checking ignition status, checking pin, please wait, establishing communication, there we go. Now we can pop in that pin, all right? And this is just a verification that let, let look, when you guys are doing uh, any key immobilizer related stuff, if you are trying to access that system too quickly, it actually uh, will set off the anti theft system and it won't work. So this is just a prompt telling you like, make sure this is it, you know? So once we put that in, pin code is correct. It's gonna take the VIN number and it's gonna update the VIN on the PCM, all right? So I'm gonna press okay. Oops, tried to put that stuff in. And it's transferring the secret key. Transfer the secret key is successful. Igni ex cycle the ignition key and uh, before starting the vehicle. So the client does that and then the vehicle starts. So what we like to do is just see whatever codes are there and, and you can see the PCM doesn't have a, a code anymore. The only code that was left was on the W PCM and uh, the DMFL, the door foot module front left. Now, if we go back into the uh, WCM module, that just had a low tire pressure sensor. So it wasn't anything related to what we did. The car's running, my client's happy, and I'm sure his client's gonna be happy, all right? That's it, you guys. That's pretty much it, all right? Um, fairly easy procedure. And there's some key points that I want you guys to remember, okay? First thing, when you're doing programming, before you're doing programming, find out the exact follow-up procedures. If you look at the technical information, they will tell you, you know, after you program it, do X, Y, Z, okay? This is important. I've been noticing a couple of guys that will, you know, my clients will call me and they'll say, hey, Kurt, I need a program. Now it's not my job to know what those things are. I don't have access to all that repair information. You know, that, that's their job, but they don't do their homework. And sometimes I say, hey man, you don't need to program this. You just need to relearn it, you know? So it, it's important to have those things up front so you'll know what to do, all right? Um, the second thing is after programming the PCM, conduct the ETC relearn and then the quick relearn, all right? Um, lastly, remember, if you guys own a maxi -sys, all right, you, it has key coding on there. You know, you can do, you know, some pin code retrievals on things, but for Chrysler's, from what I've seen, you can't do it, all right? So if that's the case, you can use a tool like the IM508 or the 608, or I said, if you're lucky, you can call the dealer. Uh, sometimes they'll give it to you, most of the time they won't. Um, there's even ways to get it through the VIN number. If you look online, if you type in like, emo pin services there's a couple websites that might come up where you can pay like forty dollars and you give them the vin number and then they'll populate the key for you all right so yeah guys that's pretty much it man i, I did this in under what 13 minutes so thanks so much for your support um i'll try to keep the videos going if i have enough time and uh, if you like to place your order you know exactly what to do peace out talk to you later